Hello and welcome to this, the full review of the Etrusco T6900DB. Now, as I've mentioned many times before, this is a 2018 model that we're looking at, a German specification, but what I'm going to be talking about in this review is a 2019 UK spec. Now, I've been using this motor home sometimes on my own, sometimes with my pal James for two weeks on what's turned out to be a very hot trip down to Italy. So bear that in mind as I go through this and I've decided to shake up the format a little bit this time and rather than go through good points, bad points, niggles, breakages and failures for each section in turn, what we're going to do on this review is basically go through the motorhome, talk about it and as we talk about each section I'll talk about things to look out for, things that work really well, things that don't work quite so well and anything that might have failed during the trip. So we're going to go through an overview, the price and the weight and so on. Then we're going to go through the exterior, the driving and the cab comfort, the daytime comfort and practicality, the nighttime comfort and practicality, the kitchen, washroom, heating and hot water, the electrical and then finally a conclusion, a little chat about how the whole vehicle has performed. So let's kick off with the overview. As I said, this is a 2018 Etrusco T6900DB and the 2019 UK spec version of this particular motorhome will be going through the tills at £51,473. That pitches it at an entry level motorhome. It's certainly, although it's a lot of money still, £51,000, it doesn't pitch anywhere near the luxury sector. This is what you would class as an entry level motorhome. With 20 litres of water in the tank, a gas cylinder, a mains lead, and 90% of fuel and a driver, the MRO, the unladen weight of this van, is 2,888 kilos. Now it has a maximum technical permittable laden mass of 3,500 kilos. That gives you a payload of 612 kilos. The great thing about the empty PLM of 3,500 kilos is that you don't need a special license to drive it. Anyone with a full driving license in the UK can can drive this with no need for any specific further exams or licenses. And then a payload of 612 kilos is phenomenal, it's really good. Now it is possible if 612 kilos of payload isn't enough for you that you can actually upgrade that empty PLM to 3850 kilos. Do be aware that if you do that, which you can do, you will affect things like how much toll you'll pay if you take it on a toll motorway overseas. It might break the commercial vehicle barrier for things like ferries and you might end up paying commercial rates on ferries. And of course it could even affect the resale value because there'll be fewer people who could drive this van with that empty PLM. So think carefully before you decide that 612 kilos isn't enough payload for you. And in specifications, this van is 696 centimetres long, 232 centimetres wide, and 290 centimetres high. Personally, I have found this to be probably the largest motorhome I would be comfortable driving. And as I suggested at the beginning of the video, this test is all about summer use. And I think that really that's what this van excels at. As an example, because this is an entry level van at a great price, you only get grade two insulation, which is fine for most people's needs. 
if you were, say, to go full timing or you wanted something for really heavy Scandinavian use, you would want grade three insulation. But for the odd week in the Alps, snowboarding or something like that, grade two is absolutely fine. But that's just one of those concessions you make to the entry level price. So that's the preamble, that's the overview, the spec. Now let's go and take a look at the outside. Okay, so starting with the exterior. First thing to note is that this particular model has been fitted with the chassis comfort pack. That will set you back an extra £1,230. It will give you 16 inch alloy wheels, black framed headlights and a black radiator grille, as well as a few titivations in the cab, which we'll go into later. It's a very smart looking motorhome. Do be aware that some commentators have noticed that this little ledge over the windscreen, as you can see, it attracts the flies. So we have an impressive fly collection collecting there. It can be a pain to keep clean. It's just one of those little things to be aware of. Another thing to notice is that there are no fog lights on this particular motorhome and neither are they an option. So I'm sure a Ducato dealer, a Fiat dealer, would be able to sort that out for you, but they are not currently an option on Etrusco UK models. Now when we took on this motorhome, there was some damage to the graphics on this side of the van and only on this side of the van. These were replaced by the factory earlier this week so now they look all nice and shiny. When it's a year old like this you just don't know what the history is and why those graphics were peeling. Were they picked off or was it a case of a bad batch because there was no problem with the graphics either side. Just to make you aware that that was a problem you may see in some previous videos some picked off little bits of graphic which is now all being replaced and hopefully that should not be an issue. What might be an issue for some people is the height of the electric step which is and I have measured it but I'll show you again it's about 12 inches or 30 centimeters and the same again getting into the motorhome. So if you're agile, that's not a problem. If you're less than agile, it could be a problem because even if you've got, oh, hello, Dougal, even if you've got a little step to take away some of the climb here, you still have the 30 centimeter, 12 inch step into the motorhome here. Just be aware of that. Another thing, here is your electrical inlet, which is on the awning side of the motorhome and again I just prefer those to be on the non-awning side. Another thing to be aware of is that your toilet emptying point is also on the awning side of the motorhome. But what I am pleased to see is there is a light and that is standard fitting a light so you can see getting in and out of the motorhome at night. As a former train guard, I really like to see that. However, do be aware that UK models will also have the door on this side of the van. So if you are pulled over on the side of the road, this door will open into traffic. There are many people who have motorhomes, caravans. I have a caravan with a door on the offside. That is something for you to decide whether or not you're happy to deal with not really an issue with me if you've got children or animals that are maybe not quite as well behaved as Dougal then you might want to give that some serious consideration. Now the awning is a cost option this is the 3.5 meter long awning you can also get 4 meters and 4.5 3.5 meters even on a 5.9 meter motorhome is is really more than enough I think and it's a cost option of £734. Personally, in my purely personal opinion, I think it is worth every penny, especially when you think that this motorhome really is aimed more at summer touring than winter touring. Let's have another look inside the garage. 
I did show you this on a previous video, so I won't linger here. A few things to note. First of all, you do have a light. You also have a mains socket down there, which could be handy if you're charging things. Your gas locker is here. So just to reiterate that the locker is sealed against the garage because the garage is actually open to the interior of the motorhome. And you do have safety dropout vents at the bottom of the gas locker. We did have a little leak when I picked up the motorhome at that joint there, which in my opinion was down to lack of preparation by the depot and not an integral fault of the motorhome. So as you can see, because of the rubber sealant around the door here, the dropout vents, there was no danger of any gas entering the accommodation. You can also see there is an outlet for the hot air heating in here, which you can close off if you don't want. Again, that's great to keep this at a reasonable temperature to stop things freezing up if you're using this for your winter touring. And you have these really neat accessible places up here to put your wedges, your electrical cable, store items, kitchen roll, things like that. This here is your apparently get going kit for if you have a puncture. So be aware too that there is no spare wheel provided with this motorhome. You get this sort of, let's have a look at it actually. Right, so in that box is just the jack to jack up the motorhome. I was told that there is a get going kit somewhere. I've not found it and I can only guess that that get going kit is a can of goop. Personally, if I was buying this motorhome, I would be investing in a spare wheel, which I would strap into the garage. Also worth noticing in the garage, which you could see in the video before I filled it with my junk, is a track system on both sides of the garage. And you do get these securing bolts, which are included in with the van. And you also notice there is a door on the other side. Let's go and look in on the other side. But in the meantime, on the way round, we'll have a look at the rear. And you can see here, we'll talk about this when we talk about the cab, is the camera, the reversing camera. Now one thing to note while I am unlocking this garage door is that the garage in every Etrusco motorhome has a weight limit of 150 kilos. That is not a huge amount if you want to put a motorbike in here. You might get a lightweight scooter, but the total payload of this garage is 150 kilos and it is not upgradable. It's fine if you want to chuck a load of sports equipment in, like I've done, and things like your bucket and all that. In fact, it's more than enough for things like that. But be aware, if you want to take a motorbike, you might end up getting a trailer. And then, of course, that's fine until you want to reverse or turn around. Finally, with the exterior, you can see here is the water filling point. So you can see, even though it's in the shade, it's got some blue there with a little tap on. You do not put diesel in here. And finally, the under here is your drainage outlet to your wastewater tank. You need a key to operate the valve. Uh, that can be a bit of a faff, but I suppose it stops people operating it without your consent. Finally, the wastewater tank is not insulated. However, insulation is an option. Sadly, I don't have how much that would cost you, but you can get the wastewater tank insulated at cost if you so wish. So there you go. That is the exterior of the motorhome. And now let's go turn our attention to the driving. So, What's it like to drive? Well, in standard guys, you get a 130 bhp Fiat Ducato engine, and that's what this particular vehicle 
has with a six-speed manual gearbox. Now you can pay to upgrade to either a 150 bhp or even a 180 bhp engine. A 180 bhp upgrade will cost you in the region of £3,700, so quite a lot. And then of course you can upgrade to automatic transmission and that will cost you £1,760. However, in this particular guise, this vehicle has the base engine, 130 bhp, and I have to say I do drive with quite a light right foot. It's been absolutely fine. I've never felt it to be underpowered or anything like that. We're currently cruising at 100 kilometers an hour, so about 60 miles an hour, which is absolutely fine. I'll be cruising at about 110 on occasion, so about 65, so I'm sure at 70 you'd be fine. You've got to remember too that because this vehicle is 2.32 meters wide, you're not going to take it on narrow, windy, mountain, steep roads. As you may remember, we were hoping to go over the San Bernardino Pass in Switzerland and we didn't because we were two centimetres over. So you have to think what you're going to use your motorhome for and I find the 130 bhp engine is absolutely fine. If you're going to be towing a motorbike or something like that, then yes, you might want to think about the 150 upgrade. And if you're going to be towing a trailer or a caravan, then yes, of course, you will probably want to think about the 180 bhp upgrade. But in its basic 130 bhp, guys, it is absolutely fine. And if I was buying this motorhome and I wasn't towing anything with it, I certainly wouldn't bother going for any engine upgrades. One upgrade that this particular vehicle has had has been the dealer fit of the Xzent Camper Satnav system and also the reversing camera which is integrated into that. So at the factory they have to install wiring for the reversing camera. I think that's about £130-140. Pounds. And then the actual Xcent Satnav itself, which is a dealer fit, will cost you in a region of £1,200. Now, when I was in Milan, looking to the campsite there, I missed the turning and the Satnav was brilliant because rather than take me around narrow roads, it literally took me three kilometres down the road to a roundabout so I could turn around and three kilometres back. There was also the time on the San Bernardino Pass that it warned me that the pass was narrower than the van. So all in all, I have to say that I think if you're going to use a sat-nav, the Xcent dealer fit sat-nav has been really good. I think together with the reversing camera, which I always think is pretty much a necessity on a vehicle of this size, I think that is an upgrade to £1,200 that is very well spent. Now it's comfortable to drive on long distances. I've said before though, I'm not over keen on these captain chairs. I find them a little bit, I could do with some lumbar support. However, James, he has a different story. See, I'm not a huge fan of the cab seats, but you love them. Yeah, yeah, I, I think they're really comfortable. I, I mean, I come from kind of small cars which are not comfortable over long journeys. That for me with the double arm rests, Feels, feels really, really nice. So yeah, interesting that we, we didn't find the same yeah. thing on that, I guess. Now, I reckon that most of the population are fine with captain chairs. It must just be me who's a bit awkward. And I think if I was buying a vehicle like this, I would get one of those lumbar supports to go in my seat for my, for my awkward back. So comfort, pretty good. Now, one of the best aspects of the driving of this particular motorhome or anything with a Fiat Ducato base has got to be the turning circle. I am so utterly impressed with the turning circle of this van. I can't give you any details or specifications and maybe I'm over impressed because as I've said before I drive a Nissan Navara D40 which has the turning circle of an oil tanker. This you can turn, I've turned around many times on a three-point turn, especially doing photography with James. We've gone up some winding mountain roads and I've had to turn around in 
about rather narrow places, the turning circle is brilliant, really, really rated. And of course, finally, on the subject of cab comfort, as I mentioned when we did the first look, in this particular van we have cup holders. Yeah! So one of my commentators has says, oh, you're not allowed to take a drink now on Europe's roads. It's not legal. So I don't know why they put cup holders in. I've asked for a source of that information. I didn't get a source of that information forthcoming. So I've not heard of this law where you're not supposed to have a drink while you're driving in Europe, but if it exists, then it exists. I've never heard of it. And then just finally, as I mentioned in an earlier vlog, if you listen, there are no squeaks or rattles, which is incredible. It's been really well put together, the cabin of this motorhome, no squeaks or rattles. It's made for quite a relaxing driving experience. I really like it. Yep, yeah, very good. So that is the overall driving experience. Now let's look at the interior comfort starting with the daytime. Right, let's move on to the daytime comfort and practicality. Now, this particular motorhome is in the brown Andorra upholstery, but many of them at the shows you'll see are in the cream Piemonte upholstery, which looks amazing. And we should have had the motorhome with the cream upholstery. I have to say that although the brown looks just a little bit, well, brown it has been fantastically practical and I do wonder how long the cream upholstery will stay looking cream especially if you have one of these yes we're looking at you Dougal another great thing here is you've got this sunroof in the cab obviously you can pull the blinds down while you're driving but one thing i have missed if i shut the door is there's no window here on this side of the motorhome there's no window in the door i've missed that both for general nosying purposes on site so i can see what's going on of course it's helped the fact that the door has been open most of the time but also while I've been driving for junctions. However, that won't be such an issue on a right-hand drive motorhome. As far as comfort goes, I've actually found this bench seat quite comfortable. You can see what I've done this time is I've brought cushions of my own. And I think a few cushions of your own will certainly go a long way to making this far more comfortable. And the great thing is I can sit on this seat sideways with the cushion and it's fairly comfortable. My legs aren't dangling too far over the end. Also, just to note, there is an extension to this table, an extension piece that goes in at the end. It pulls out if you are sitting five at this table. Now, while we're focused here, Dougal is bringing our attention to the mismatched floor tiles. There's one here at the front, which Dougal doesn't look very excited about at all. You're not pleased with that mismatched tile, are you, Dougal? No. And I can tell from the first look video I did, a lot of other people are also not too impressed with these mismatched tiles. Just get my... Okay, so you've got one at the front and one at the back. Now the good news is, folks, that if you want, this motorhome does come with a carpet. So if you put the carpet over that, that's going to solve everything. It doesn't really worry me that much, but it has worried a lot of people. Storage all around is brilliant, is really good. It would be even better without this bed because you'd have lockers all the way across. One of the best bits of storage, most useful, has been this magazine rack where I'll just throw the keys and the dog lead and stuff when I get in. If you look at the first look video I made, I went through all the storage in more detail. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. As I say, there is storage everywhere. That's a great place to put your shoes. So I found storage has been terrific. And then finally, one last little comment about daytime living space and practicality, and that is the design of the kitchen here in the middle means that when there were two of us, when James was here, and if I was working at the kitchen, 
I could stand and James could pass to and from the washroom and he had that cupboard. So again, you've got this fairly practical layout. Apart from the two steps, you've got a step there and you've got a step here. But apart from the two steps, it's a really practical layout for more than one person of moving up and down the motorhome. Finally, above the kitchen, you have a midi hecky roof light. So that's your daytime comfort and practicality. Now let's move on to the nighttime comfort and practicality. It's not nighttime yet, Dougal. Okay, so nighttime comfort here. This is the rear bed, and I have been sleeping here for two weeks. I found it really comfortable. There are two things missing, either a shelf or a pocket for a mobile phone. So there's nowhere to put a mobile phone at night. And also there's nowhere to stand your cup of tea in the morning. So I've been sitting up at the dinette if uh, the bed hasn't been down at the front, but when James was in the bed at the front, there was nowhere to put my tea. And as I say, a couple of pockets wouldn't go amiss either to put your phones in but you can see I can sit up here at the rear bed it's very comfortable now another thing to be aware of is the this bed is again for the agile is a good step to get into the bed but you have to obviously step climb in and climb out again not so much an issue if you are the person sleeping on the outside or on your own like me but if you're the person sleeping on the inside you're gonna to have to climb over the person sleeping on the outside and then try and line up with the step to get out. For most people, that's not a problem, but you have gotta be aware that you are gonna wake up and disturb the person sleeping on the outside. And don't forget, you are both open to the washroom if someone's using the washroom and someone is in bed. So there are different layouts available with different bed configurations if you would prefer. However, this is the layout for tall people because this bed is seven foot one long. That's 216 centimeters, that's huge. And it is four foot seven wide, so that's 140 centimeters wide. So size wise, it's a really generous bed. Now let's go back to James and see what he has to say about the optional drop down bed at the front. Uh, the drop down bed in particular blew my mind a little bit. It's such an efficient use of space. And I think typically in my experience, when you've got something that's that efficient a use of space, it's not all that good at doing its primary job. Uh, whereas that, that bed is really, really comfortable. It's huge, comfortably. Um, capable of having two people and uh, yeah I'm a big fan of that. So to lower the bed is really simple you just pull on that catch and you pull down. It's cantilevered so you don't take a lot of effort and that's it that is it. Now you have a ladder that you can attach to it or what James used to do is he simply used to spring off the front seats here and climb in from the front. Right, let's get the tape measure and see how big this bed is. Right, so it is six foot three long, which is 190 centimeters. Right, and then width is four foot six wide, 138 centimeters. Now, one thing I've been really curious to know about this bed, because James slept in the sleeping bag, he took his sleeping bag off in the morning and stored it in the cubby hole over the cab. I want to know is, can you leave your bedding on here during the day? Let's find out. Oh, and by the way, folks, I forgot to mention, there is a roof light over the, the uh, optional bed for ventilation okay so moment of truth I think there's your answer the answer is no So 
So that would be a pain. Let's just get rid of this pillow to start with, see if we can lock it without the pillow. No, and it won't lock even with a duvet. I'd imagine it'd be okay with just a sheet on there. But that's something to be aware, folks, is that while well, you can probably leave a sheet on here, you're going to need to take the duvet off during the day. And that, my friends, is a faff. Because it won't fit in these lockers either. You can barely do it with the uh, curtains that are supplied. So it's either sleeping bags or you're going to have to strip the duvet off every day and probably store it on the back bed. Just something to be aware of. Now the lighting in this motorhome is really good. Uh, really good lighting. There's one dark point which is this sort of central corridor here. There's no lighting above that. Other than that, there's great task lighting in the kitchen. You've got both ambient and task lighting in the main lounge area. And then finally, just be aware that the curtains to the cab are not lined. This is just another concession to the Etrusco's price tag. So just be aware of that. You may want to invest in some thermal screens or even better, ask your dealer if they could fit you some Fiat Decato cab blinds, which are very swish, but you'll be paying for those. So there you go. That is the nighttime comfort and practicality. Moving on to kitchen, washroom, heating and hot water. We'll start with the kitchen. Now don't pay too much attention to this part of the kitchen folks because for the 2019 UK models you will have a combined oven and grill here with spark ignition. So this will be slightly changed of the oven and grill here, probably um, a cupboard below that. And then you'll have your cutlery drawer here above the cupboard here. However, one thing is staying the same and it's probably my least, one of my least favorite parts of this motorhome and that is this hob. There are two things that really bug me with this hob. Number one, there's no spark ignition. Hello, it is 2018 and there's no spark ignition to a hob. You're not telling me that's gonna cost a lot of money to put in. The second thing that really bugs me with this hob is that all three burners are the same size. Now my espresso maker my little coffee pot is tiny and my frying pan is huge now why they can't install three different sizes of burner i really don't know and i don't think it would add that much to the cost of the motorhome so i have to say it's okay you know it works you need matches and it does the job it just doesn't do the job as well as it could and it wouldn't cost a lot of money to make that a far better hob. So that I have to say, I'm afraid, is just a niggle that is really, it really gets to me, you can tell. Over to the washing up area, and this is where we had one of the only failures of the trip, and that is the micro switch to this tap failed. It's quite annoying, it was a niggle, but to be fair, these taps they're fitted to a lot of motorhomes and caravans it's not really an issue with this particular motorhome I just put that down to one of those things the layout of the kitchen is pretty good I've been using this cooker top to do the drying up nice big spacious sink and then an option if you want it is an extractor fan that is a cost option we didn't have it on this motorhome so as well as giving me one of my least favorite parts of this motorhome the kitchen has also given me one of my total favorites and that is this fridge freezer it is phenomenal because not only you can see hello not only is it huge but you have a separate door for the freezer 
and the fridge which I rate highly. I can't even begin to start filling this fridge. It's been really efficient, really cold. One thing to be aware of though folks is that I can imagine this has consumed a lot of energy because obviously all that space needs cooling that will take a lot of energy. It's not been an issue on this trip, um, but it has kept things really cool, even when the temperature has got up to 39 degrees. So you've got one of the best parts of the motorhome, the fridge, and one of the least best parts of this motorhome, which is that hob. Sorry to go on about it, but you can tell I don't like it. I guess the fridge freezer is no joke, probably 40% bigger than mine at home. <laughs> So um, that's a big plus for me. Um, now let's move on to the washroom. And first of all, I want to talk about this shower cubicle because it's brilliant. It is a terrific use of space. You see you've got a little drop down rail here. Let's get rid of my towel. We've got that drop down rail there. There is your shower. So during the day I've been using this space just to store some bags. I'll get rid of those and show you how it turns from daytime space into a shower cubicle. As if by magic the bags have disappeared and the way we turn this into a shower is really simple. We lift out the floor which reveals the duckboard. Oh dear, it needs a bit of a sweep out. So you can see this is great. The shower has two drains. I have used the shower when I used the area Soster. It was absolutely fine. And the great thing is this door swings like that. And then this door is a bifold door, which makes the cubicle like this. And you will be pleased to know, folks, that when I took a shower in here, not only was it a very comfortable, good shower, but there was no splashing around whatsoever. So there was no water got out of any of these seals uh, because if it had, it might have made the bed wet, but it didn't. It managed to contain all the water, no problem at all. Right, I'm just showing you the base of the shower tray in more detail. This is fantastic, the shower tray if you can see if the camera is picking that up is a molded unit with a great lip at the bottom here so there is no chance of water getting into the fabric of the motorhome because you've got this lipped tray at the bottom and then the panels are overlapped so that you will not get water escaping into the fabric of the motorhome so that is top absolutely brilliant and then moving over to the other side of the washroom first of all i will just remark once again that the door separates off the rest of the motorhome got these great towel rails on the door as well There's a little gap above so that will make the toilet I'll obviously shower and wash basin open to the bedroom now if you are sharing with a partner that won't be too much of an issue but if you're sharing one of the single bed models like we should have had the t7400 sb or even if say for example when i was sleeping in this bed james was in the front bed there was a no using the washroom policy for james because of this lack of privacy. If I was sleeping here and he was having a tinkle here, even with this curtain, um, it wouldn't be terribly private. So it's just something to be aware of whether or not that suits your needs. It was fine for us and obviously it's fine for a single person. The only other thing I wanted to mention about the washroom, I don't think I showed you this cupboard last time, um, which is terrific. All my rubbish in. Oh, oh, hello. Sorry, couldn't do a review without a hello. The only thing I'd say about this washroom, I'm um, great sink, little cupboard below, is the fact that 
if you are not on the mains the toilet flush is quite weak if you're on the mains it gives it a bit of a boost so you can see i've got a washing up liquid bottle of water there just to help the flush when you're on the road you're not on the mains or you're on an area suster and you're not hooked up uh, this is also worth bearing in mind this is a mains socket we'll come to that in the electrical and obviously that may not be fitted to UK models to comply with NCC regulations. Moving on quickly to the heating and hot water. Heating and hot water. Now ignore this old fashioned control because I've been assured that for 2019 in the UK we're going to be getting Truma iNet ready digital displays. Also we will be getting the Truma 6E combi heater so that will work off both gas and mains so if we've blown air heating and a 10 litre hot water tank excellent an option you can have though if you want it is uh, underfloor heating which is electric and that will set you back an extra 440 pounds but it's great news that in the UK we're going to be getting that dual fuel Truma combi heater for your hot water and your blown air. So just to quickly sum up, kitchen, washroom, heating and hot water, hop could be better, the fridge freezer is awesome, and yes in the UK we're going to get a dual fuel electric and gas heating and hot water system. Now let's move on to the electrics in this motorhome. Now, as I've mentioned, this has been a warm weather test, so we haven't put it through its paces in the cold. And on the nights I've spent off grid away from a mains hookup, the battery has never got to below 12.3 volts. That's even using the laptop all evening, using the inverter off the battery. It's never dropped below 12.3 volts, so that's been great. I would always recommend if you're going to use a motorhome like this in the winter and off grid to get a second battery. That is an option to get a second battery. Also, if you're going to use it off grid in the summer, I would also rec recommend a solar panel, which would be a dealer fit option on this motorhome. But we've had no problems at all on this test. Now, speaking of using my laptop, as I said, I used it with an inverter. Your only 12 volt socket in the accommodation is here under the cooker. So I've had to trail my inverter and rest it on the kitchen worktop and then trail a trailing socket over the top here to work at my laptop at the table. I think that 12 volt socket is in a terrible place. It's really been put where it suits the manufacturer, not where it would suit the user. So I'm not terribly impressed with that. However, the main sockets are a far happier story. We have a main socket here under the hob. We have another main socket here under the kitchen cupboard. We have another mains socket you can see here under the table I've plugged my trailing socket into that at the moment and then as I've mentioned in tours earlier we got one in the garage and then there's one in the washroom but as I said for the UK models I can see that being blanked off to comply with NCC regulations now this motorhome has a double USB socket and that is in a terrifically useful place right by the table where you're going to need it. So even if you've got one of these stingy little Apple leads to plug in your iPhone or your iPad, you can still sit at the table and have it plugged in. That is terrific. Now, if only they could have put the 12 volt socket next to that, that would be perfect because as I say, the 12 volt socket is in a, quite an impractical place in my opinion, but they've more than compensated with the USB socket which is here, right by the table, where you're gonna need it, top marks. And that is the electricals. So there you have it. That is the review, the results of two weeks living with this Etrusco T6900DB. So just to recap, the best bits have definitely been 
the layout really worked for me and James, with especially with the optional drop-down bed. The fridge, which is just phenomenal, and the general use of space. It's comfortable, yet it's not too much stuff. It's really, the use of space is, in my opinion, spot on. What's not been so great really has been the hob. I think it could be vastly improved and it wouldn't cost a lot more to put in spark ignition and get three different size burners. And the location of the 12 volt socket. Again, it's just been put where it's been simple for the factory rather than where you would use it. Other than those two little niggles and then just those couple of minor failures with the micro switch and some graphics coming off in the extreme heat, which as I said, they could have been picked off by previous users, we don't know. Other than those minor niggles, I think this is an absolutely terrific motorhome. And if any one of my friends said to me, I'm thinking of buying an Etrusco, I would say, spot on well done i've really enjoyed my time with this motorhome i think as long as you're aware of the shortcomings with things like the bathroom that's not personal to the bedroom and the fact that this is an entry level motorhome so you've got things like curtains in the cab you haven't got cab blinds if you're happy with all those kind of things you want something to go off and go on holiday with this is absolutely terrific and yeah i really 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 like it so I hope you found that review useful, whether or not you're going for an Etrusco motorhome, whether or not you're going for uh, this layout, I hope you found this useful in general if you're going to go and look for a motorhome. Unfortunately, Etrusco will not be at the NEC Motorhome and Caravan Show in October 2018 because the first models will be arriving in the UK at the end of October. So what I would advise that you do is that you follow Etrusco UK on social media channels, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'll put links in the description below this and they will announce when dealers are getting stock and if any dealers around the UK will be hosting shows when they get the Etrusco motorhomes in stock so please give Etrusco UK a follow keep up to date with when we'll be seeing these lovely motorhomes in the UK a huge thank you to Etrusco UK who have actually sponsored this whole trip but they do not interfere with the content and they do not interfere or influence these reviews in any way shape or form they take the criticism on the chin just as well as they like to hear the good stuff and I have to say hand on heart this is a really good motorhome I really like it as you may have noticed I might have said that once or twice right come on Dougal hop, hop, hop. right I couldn't sign off without the star of the show so it just leaves me to say from Dougal and from me thanks for tuning in right do you like this motorhome as much as I do Dougal yes yes you, you like it. Yeah. he never smiles Are you excited about the road trip and off we go again!